to to the other things that you do, which I'm I'm really hey. impressed by. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me about your crystal and Reiki healing. Uh, what yes. sparked your interest in it? What sparked your interest in it? Tell me about it. Oh, so this was um, the whole stories in the Buddha made me do it. That's why I actually ended up writing that book. It's it's like um, a spiritual memoir, kind of like an Eat, Pray, Love meets Bridget Jones's diary. So oh. my my girlfriend, Julie, who's a celebrity ghost writer, she lives a few blocks away. She's coming over tonight. We're going to do some card readings together. But we both love all the spiritual stuff, the paranormal, all that. So we started to, um, well, it all started with a, a Buddha statue, a little statuette of a Buddha that when my husband and I moved, I got mm -hmm. rid of. And he said, where is it? And I was not going to admit to him I got rid of it. So I said, <laughs> sure, it's in the garage. I'll find it. In the meantime, I hightail myself all over Los Angeles trying to replace it. In the meantime, oh, no. in the meantime, I walk into a place called the Imagine Center in Tarzana on Ventura Boulevard here in Los Angeles. And um, they didn't have any Buddhas, but they had classes. They had a flyer that said, you know, they had these interesting classes for $15, connect with your guides or create abundance. So I called Julie and I said, hey, um, I have, couldn't find a Buddha, but there, there's this place that they have these really great classes. Do you want to take one? So she said, sure. So we started taking classes at the Imagine Center like Wednesday nights. So much fun. We started in October 2013. I can't believe it's been like four years already on this journey. And we loved it. And one of the, so we take the woman there that owns it, Tahita, she's great. And we said, we'll take anything she teaches. And one of the classes was crystal healing. Julie wasn't interested in that one. So I took it. And then while taking the class, I learned I could get certified in it. So I said, oh, this mm. is so cool. So I got certified. And during the certification, Tahita said, hey, if you want to add Reiki to it, to your practice, whatever you want to add, you could do. And I was like, I had had Reiki once before a few years prior, and but didn't know much about it. So got on the internet, immediately found a Reiki master in Beverly Hills, uh, Cat Lowe. And then I, I uh, signed up for the class. Be went through all of it. And so now I'm getting certifications. I got certification from Zarathustra, the international healer, fifth dimensional quantum healing. I studied with Deborah King, um, wow. energy work. Uh, so I keep adding and I, I absolutely love it. So I can yeah. tell you're passionate about it. Did passionate you, about yes, it. you are. Can you, uh, do you connect this? I mean, like the crystals also connected to matchmaking or how does it work? I have connected it because okay. there's people who so I've had clients in other states. I do distance healing. So like one of my clients uh, just went online, paid with PayPal, and then he got um, a distance healing session from me. So then I'll tell the person, okay, let me know when you're going to be laying down. Usually it's in the evening before bed or whatever. And then they'll lay down relaxed and then I'll, I'll send them energy. And I've got some uh, testimonials on there. You can take a look at what people have said, but they can feel like the last guy I sent distance healing, he felt somebody like spirit or guide or whatever to touch him he's he it was just really magical so um i have some of my clients come in for clearings for healings uh work on the heart chakra because like i was saying you want to clear yourself love yourself get yourself in that high vibration um so it's just great i mean if you're looking for love or any anything even yeah, if so you're not looking for love to do you know i'm always healing i'm always giving my husband like every morning when my husband and i get up he sits at the edge of the bed and he wants some Reiki. So he says, you know, give me some energy. And he's, you know, it calms him down for the day. He tends to be really like hyper. Mm -hmm. And then my dog, I give her some Reiki every day and myself. And so Reiki basically is an energy, the way that you Reiki energize. is a Japanese energy uh, healing. And it is, um, so it's just universal life force energy. So I'm not the healer. The healing is coming through me. So if you think about what's beating our heart right now, like I think a lot of people don't think about it. How is your heart beating? What's beating it? Exactly. So exactly. It's the energy, energy that's all around us. We're swimming in that soup. So we've got chakra. We have seven major chakras, which are energy wheels. Uh, the word is Sanskrit. So there's from the root up until to the crown. Mm -hmm. And those wheels that are spinning are bringing in the energy into our body that's what animates us so you need to have the chakras spinning right the um, energy coming in um, if we don't have energy in our body if it's stagnant mm -hmm. uh, we can have disease in the body um, different issues so you want to 
So I'll do a lot of clearing. I'll use my selenite wand uh, oh. to clear. But first, I'll break up the energy with my with my um, rattle. Mm -hmm. Then you clear it with this, and I'll use feathers. Uh, we'll place crystals on the body. A beautiful maybe singing bowl. Wow. Use a little sound. Um, you know, and then I've got just beautiful different crystals. Like, look at this carnelian. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love it. I may even a clear crystal. If you have a clear crystal, yeah. you can just set it on, lay down and set it on your body. It'll uh, balance the chakras. Oh, you really? Want to the clear crystal will do it. Real, clear quartz is really powerful. Now, for love, okay. I have a little rose quartz heart. Okay. Um, if you... And then also, I always like a piece of black tourmaline at my desk or wear it because that is helps with electromagnetic uh, frequency pollution. Also, uh, keeps psychic attack away, bad people sending bad vibes to you. Yeah. But crystals are great. They, I mean, they're programmable. They're living beings. I mean, out of the exactly, earth. Exactly. Exactly. Use them for you know TV, radio because because you you can store information. So you can go online and Google or YouTube how to clear and program your crystal because you don't just want to buy one and then other people have been touching it and stuff. So clearing it, you could sage it. You could have the intention in your mind and blow it, clear it, and then you want to put an intention in it. Okay, Crystal, you are going to help me connect to my angels. That's your job. You know, so that's mm. this crystal's I job. I want to so get one of those, the one that the, you show me, the clear one, to, to clear, really yeah. clear my chakras. Yeah, that's beautiful. And what so. do you do? What do you do with, once you get one? You have to, like you say, you have to clear it, right? Yeah, clear it. You want to clear it, which you could just take some sage or incense and burn it and let the, let the, um, smoke, you know, uh -huh. clear it. Mm -hmm. You can put it in, uh, you can put it under the moonlight. Um, there's a lot of different, different, oh, there's different so many ways, different ways. Oh, you can let cold water run over it. Okay. Um, all crystals, like if you have selenite, you wouldn't want to put that in water because that could kind of melt. It's very delicate, but a clear, clear crystal you can, but all that info is on online. Online. So. Yeah. That's so wonderful. Gosh, that's so, I, it's so incredible because, you know, you and I connect there because I love, I started learning a little bit more about stones and crystals and how they work because actually they do make a difference. They do make a difference. And, and, and people don't realize, like you said just now, that all these uh, stones and crystals come from the earth. So yeah, that's already that strength oh, there. Yeah. We're walking. We're, we're actually walking on a crystal. I mean, the Earth's a crystal. There's, there's crystals running through the whole Earth. Isn't that magical? Mm -hmm. It's so sad that we've got all this pavement and stuff over everything. But but uh, it's it's so amazing. Um, and then, okay, so you guys, I know everybody always wants more money, right? Money yes. in your life. <laughs> Citrine. It's called the Merchant Stone. It's a nice, sunny, pretty yellow. And keep that in your cash register or at your workplace. And uh, that can help you bring in more sales and money. Oh, that's good. That's good to know. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you about this other thing because I was amazed about this too and the story. I need for you to tell us the story or tell uh, the, the, the people the story about the astral plane, you know, oh. about your dad and how you, uh, you got to tell them the story. Tell us about okay. what, what is an astral plane, first of all. Yeah, the astral plane. Well, I mean, we're, there's different dimensions, right? So the, and it, that's been proven scientifically that there's many other dimensions. So I, and I tell this, this story is also in my book, the Buddha, Buddha made me do it. So my dad, I was very close to my, to my dad. He passed away of cancer in two, 2001. And, um, so when I was on this, uh, when I started this in 2013, like I've always been on a spiritual path, going to a lot of lectures, yeah. reading metaphysical books, but I really started diving deep in 2013 and Julie, it was her idea for me to write the book. So because of the book, I started doing more stuff to write about also. Mm -hmm. So, um, I started, uh, you know, meditating and going to all these classes and using the crystals and the, the um, okay. So the energetic attunement. So Reiki, you have to get attuned by a master to be able to pass that energy through. So the attunements opened me up to be able to connect uh, with my angel and kind of get a little more psychically open. So I noticed that at night in bed, I started, and this had happened to me when I was a kid a few times, I would leave my body. So maybe some of you out there, you think, so I, I'd be laying in bed and I could feel all of a sudden my, my, I'm floating above my body. Wow. I'm just kind of 
Woo. And then there was a couple times I really kind of went out there. And um, one night, all of a sudden, I, I find myself at this, uh, in the corner of my bedroom standing up and looking in the corner. And I see, now, it, I wasn't physically standing up. It was my spirit, you know, standing up. And I see in the corner, there's this light coming out of the corner of the coming out of the corner of the bedroom and something, mm. something's coming, somebody's coming out of there. Oh and I was God. freaking out and I was like, okay, just stay there and look, find out who it is. And I had a knowing all of a sudden it was my dad. And I said, I, and my dad's coming in, my husband was sleeping and I'm like yelling, it's dad, it's dad, it's dad. And my husband of course wasn't waking up because I'm here in the spirit world screaming. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> wow. You know, it's really happening. I didn't realize it at the time. I think I'm standing in there screaming, it's dead. So then all of a sudden I'm back in bed and my dad is sitting at the edge of the bed. He's sitting on the edge of the bed. He's wearing a, a it's like it happened, you know, an hour ago. I still feel it so strong. He's wearing a brown cloak with a hood, kind of like a monk. Mm -hmm. And it's weird because my dad was like an atheist, you know. <laughs> he was like. Yeah. He didn't believe in anything. I was like, why is my dad wearing a, like a monk's cloak? And then I, I scrambled to the edge of the bed and I grabbed his arm and, and I could see his face was kind of thinner and his eyes were a little watery and he was nodding, just like no, this knowing nod. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And then he's nodding at me, we're looking in each other's eyes and then he disappeared. Oh my God. I scrambled back to the bed and then I was laying there. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this. I, I saw dad. And then the next morning, too, everything was like a little brighter, a little, you know. But then I was like, okay, what happened here? And then I was talking to a psychic at a psychic fair. This guy, he was selling crystals and stuff. And we had this long conversation. And I said, um, told him what happened. I said, my dad was there, but I don't understand. How, how did I see him? And I wasn't, I was in bed. And he says, you, you were on the astral. You astral projected. You, were on the, you saw him on the astral plane. Oh and uh, so, yeah, so there he was on the astral plane. Yeah. And so w with that, it was just uh, an interesting, inf have you had any more of those uh, happen to you? Yeah, well, I do kind of float out. And then, you know what happens sometimes? <laughs> this is weird. I'll be sleeping and then I guess it's with the third eye. I'll see somebody standing at, at my bed, at the edge of my bed or standing next to me. And I wake up and I open my eyes real fast and I'm screaming because I'm so mm -hmm. scared. So I'm mm -hmm. standing. Mm -hmm. I feel, feel this man standing there. And, uh, you know, then there's nobody there when I open my eyes. But um, I see that. So, yeah, different kind of paranormal things start happening once you start opening yourself up to this. Mm -hmm. um, there's an interesting chapter in my book uh, about when some low energy entities came in through my crown chakra. Oh my goodness. They were like hitchhikers. They, I had to have them removed by my healer. Uh, there's a lot of people don't realize this, but we get uh, low energy attachments. I mean, just look out on the freeway, the people, you know, there's been, you know, road rage and how, you know, angry some people can get and different, um, uh, health problems. And I noticed that some stuff was going on and I thought I was trying to channel. So I'm really interested in channelers. There's some channelers out there. I love to listen to Abraham Hicks, Daryl Anka, who channels Bashar and um, Cryon. And uh, there's, there's a lot of channelers out there. I think it's fascinating. And I was like, I want to channel. So one night in bed too, I felt something come down in my crown. I have a lot of energy at the crown. Mm -hmm. Something come in and paralyze me. Oh my and goodness. I thought, ooh. First, I thought, great, somebody's coming in to channel. And then I was like, it felt really scary. It was a heavy energy that felt, I was like, and then I just said, you have to get out. And I was said, called in Jesus and Archangel Michael. And I said, you know, I'm sorry, get out. You have to get out now. And it left. And then I was like, sorry, I don't know who you are. If you were just trying to channel or something, but that really didn't feel good. And then I went to, some other things were happening, some, some hardness at the solar plexus. My arm was hurting, some different things. And I went to my healer and had it entered, you know, I told her and she says, Oh, um, yeah, you've got some attachments. And I said, Ooh. what? And it's 10. And hmm. so, um, she removed them. So, and she says, you know what, Marla, it's really good that you went through this because as a healer, uh, now you know how it feels. And, and, uh, when somebody comes to you with that issue, because there's been a lot of people who came to me with the same issue. I had a guy email me the other day and he asked me who can help him because for seven years he's had some attachments that he wants to get rid of and he hasn't been able to. Um, so, you know, it happens. I know. Wow. <laughs> this is, it's incredible. Some of the things I know you've had 
Cosmic Conversations with incredible, you've interviewed people and you've done so many things with that because it's like you say, you're such a learning, a, you like to continue to learn, you're gonna be this type of, you know, it's, it's like you're being used by the universe to try to keep learning so that you can help others, you know? And, right. and I'm so impressed because you've written definitely six books and I was looking at uh, some, I know Buddha made me do it, and, and you've mentioned along the way uh, in our conversation of some of the things that you include in the book, but I also want to let our public know that you have, um, you know, you have Diary of Beverly Hills Matchmaker, you have Worthy of Love, Excuse me. Yes. And, uh, yeah, excuse if you me, want to know what it's like being a Ma Beverly Hills matchmaker, I wrote a, a memoir called Diary of a Beverly Hills Matchmaker. It's on my website. Everything's on Amazon. And uh, that's really funny. It, it's about my day-to-day -day life over one year of working in, in the Beverly Hills matchmaking service, the clients, the... Um, my, you know, my husband's in it, my mom's in it. So it's not just stories about dating. It's anybody can read it, reads like a novel. And I did it because people kept asking me everywhere I go. Like if I'm at a party and somebody says, what do you do? I, and I say, I'm a matchmaker. He's like, oh my God, you must have the most crazy stories. What's your craziest story? Or tell me, how is it? What do you do? So I'm like, well, and then Julie, it was Julie again. Um, Hey Julie, you're going to be watching this. So Hey Julie, uh, she told me, why don't you write a memoir and uh, about it? And so I said, I had just written self-help books before that, but I gave it a shot and it's a really great book. And then I wrote the sequel called Hearts on the Line, The Elusive Pursuit of Love in the City of Angels. Then if you want, you know how I used to be an uh, actress slash waitress, I have a short story on Kindle, which is on Amazon called Amateur Night. And that's about when I was a waitress one fateful Valentine's night in a Chicago steakhouse. Super oh funny. Oh my gosh. So, so how did you be, I mean, did you, I'm yeah. sorry, did you uh, want to be, I mean, is, is it a natural thing for you to be a writer? I mean, because look at all the things that you've done in writing. How did you get interested in that too? I wanted to be a writer since I was like in the third grade and I used to um, write poetry and I'd, I'd write letters to my favorite authors. Uh, Ram Ramona the Pest was like my favorite, Beverly Cleary. It would, she, that was my favorite book in the third grade and I think I wrote her a letter and, um, yeah, I always wanted to write, but then over the years, you know, I'm from the era in my 20s, it was the 80s, and I tried to write a book, and I had to use one of those typewriters, and then you make a mistake, you got to take the white out and white it out, and then you yeah. just rip it, page out and crumple it up and throw it across the room. You're like, forget it, and I, I just got too frustrated, and so then when computers came out, uh, I had a friend who was a writer, and I said, how do you do this? I don't understand. I don't know even where the punctuation goes properly, and he goes... <laughs> Well, I don't know that either. That's what editors are for. Exactly. So like, oh, I can hire an editor to fix my problems, you know, my typos or whatever. So I do have a really great editor on all these books. Her name is Peggy Lang, and she was she's amazing. I couldn't the books would not be what they are without her. Um, I never studied writing. I, you know, was good in English class and stuff, but it's just something I like to do. I like to express myself that way. Um, just wrote a travel article, um, blog, newsletter my books. So I just try to keep writing. It's just fun. Wonderful. What about uh, the Buddha made me do it? What are things that we're going to find in this new book that you have out? Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's kind of like an eat, pray, love meets Bridget Jones's diary. It's a, uh, uh, it chronicles, I think it might chronicle two years. Now I'm getting mixed up of all of the, uh, adventures that Julie and I did. So all the things that we tried. So it's kind of like if you're interested in trying these spiritual modalities, you can live through through them. You can kind of go through them through me. Uh, so when I like when I went to see a channeler or um, when we tried candle magic or going to the Conscious Life Expo and and uh, meeting all these people. But it's in a humorous way. Uh, my husband's in there, some different things that I do. It's it's just fun. I mean, I've I've read reread the book like five times just to just to. Um, live it again it was so much fun and uh but now i'm on i'm trying to write a cozy a murder mystery because my husband's like okay you've written enough memoirs you you've written about me and your mom enough times why don't you you know use your creativity and write a fiction uh book so i've never written fiction i'm giving it's trying my hand at it now yeah yeah hey you know the important thing is that you are doing what you love marla and, mm -hmm. and not only that, you, you're exploring all the different facets of your talent. 
you know, because sometimes people get so stuck in just doing one thing and this is the only thing I can do. But the universe has given us so many talents sometimes and we're so much afraid of even using them. Um, I know you're a matchmaker and definitely you, you've shown us here all the different talents and gifts that God gave you. Um, what would you tell and how would you encourage? First of all, tell us something in relationship to close our, our, our interview. Um, what would you tell the people that are looking for love? And then what would you tell people about searching for the right person or, or, or the things that are gift, your gifts, like you have done? Yeah, well, I mean, who doesn't want to be in love, right? It's kind of just in in us to always search for even how many times our hearts are broken. We're, I, I used to get heartbroken all the time. Guys would break up with me, and I'd say, that's it. I'm not dating anymore. This is the last one. And then I'm like, okay, well, maybe one more time. <laughs> <laughs> right, once more, because we always want to be with somebody. But that can be a trap, too, because we want to be happy with ourselves. What if we don't meet that right person? Or what if the people aren't up to our standards. We get in relationships and they're not right for us. We got to be happy alone. And there's a lot of perks to, to being alone. You can do what you want, when you want, like we were talking about, uh, go on trips, try different things. So if you are alone, don't put your life on hold until you meet that special person. Like some people will say, uh, I'll say, Oh, you know, Venice, Italy is so, so beautiful. Well, it's a romantic city, but it's so amazing. And people would say, well, I'm going to wait until I find that special person to go. I'm not going to go until. What if you never do? Go. Maybe you'll meet the person over there or on the flight. You never know. So do your live your life. And uh, while you're living your life and having a great time, that's when you're going to meet somebody special. Don't just put anything on hold or, or make it like a mission, I would say. I had... Uh, this one friend who announced to me one year, it was January, she says, well, I'm going to get ma my goal, I'm going to get married this year, and that's it. And she didn't have any boyfriend or anything, you know, and then she'd tell the guys on the date, she'd be dating, she'd go, oh my God. yeah, I'm getting married this year, and then imagine like October, November comes rolling around, yeah, I'm getting married by the end of the year, and they're, they're like running for the hills. So you don't need to make that, um, uh, Stay put that pressure on, on yourself or anybody else. Yeah. So you have to be careful when you're starting today, you have to be careful how you approach and how you, you know, basically handle a, a, a person, a relationship. But like you said, you have to know yourself first before you plunge into trying to have a relationship. And and definitely, I, 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 I believe that um, people have to be well rounded, rounded before they make decisions like that. And but never give up on love, like you said. Love yourself, yes, but never give up on love. It what age. Sometimes some people will contact me. Oh, I know I'm over 50 or I'm over 40 or I'm over 60. That doesn't matter. Now, I might not be able to match you because I have a specialized clientele, but that doesn't mean that that person's not out there for you, that there's other ways, not at all. There's people getting into relationships at all ages. And my mom lives you know, up in Seattle in an age-approved community, everybody's older. And there's people meeting, their, their spouses pass away, they meet somebody new, they get married, they're 70, 80 even. So it's in love is love, you know, love, get out there. And um, my mom, uh, you know, her, uh, my dad died, but they weren't married at the time. Then she mm -hmm. got married again, he died. And uh, you know what, she feeds the homeless twice a week. She helps her neighbors. She has people coming over for happy hour at her house all the time. So, you know, love, have, you can have love in your life with friends, with giving, and you'll have a life full of love. Okay. So anyway, just to end up, I know that they can go into your website, which is www.marla. I don't know if I pronounce your last name. Martinson. Martinson.com. M-A-R-T-E-N-S-O-N. -E yes. And uh, if women are interested, uh, what do they have to do? I know you, your clients are men, but what do, what do women have to do if they want to be part of your matchmaking? You can just come to my website, and there's a matchmaking area, and you can fill out a form and send me some photos. Oh, and okay. uh, Yeah, and if I don't have anybody for you now, I'll just keep your info, uh, because I do have a very small list, just like a dozen to 15, usually, guys. Okay. So I might not have somebody for everybody at, at the time but I do keep everybody's info so feel free to contact me and go download your uh, self-love meditation oh, yes every women out there need to do this I really thank you Marla for this wonderful hour of interview that you gave us I think thank you were so entertaining and I wish you all the best continuously 
and definitely keep doing what you're doing because you're doing a great job, not only from matchmaking and being a Cupid, but, but your healing practices and, and all the beautiful things that you share with us today. Thank you so much, Marla, for being Thanks. with Bye. us. Bye. <laughs> and um, I just want to remember all of you to continue to watch us. Check our website as well, www.believe.love, because you're going to find this interview and many more interviews. And you also will have, um, you know, in our categories, money and business, true success, health and wellness, world news in our universe, you'll find wonderful topics. So I hope that uh, you enjoy this this. Um, interview and remember to check out Marla at her website and all the beautiful things that she offers you uh, for your benefit in love. So till next time.